Okay, just to, um, just to do some, some, some basic introductions, um, some of you will know some of the people sat around here. Um, first sort of starting off, Jason, uh, Jason Merrim, uh, formerly Head of uh, Online Change and Development at Sainsbury's. Jason joined Sainsbury's in January 2012 to lead the online development for food and non-food. Uh, previously spending five years with Tesco.com, he also worked with Bain and Samsung. Uh, Sainsbury's, as you all probably know, is the second largest online grocer in the UK. And uh, Jason's story doesn't really finish there, as he's also now transgressed into the world of real retailing and is now actually uh, running 19 stores as part of the understanding the, 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 the further part of the multi-platform uh, multi strategy. We then have Michael, and uh, of course everyone's sat in the wrong order for me, which is always good. Um, Michael, uh, Director of Logistics at Debenhams, uh, 23 years experience, although you wouldn't think that looking at him. Um, predominantly centred on the fashion industry, um, Michael's experience covers all asset fac uh, facets sorry, of logistics, operations, IT, business development, commercials, uh, all in the last decade. And during Michael's career, he's worked with several blue chip organisations, including uh, NFC, Marks and Spencers, DHL, and of course Debenhams. And a key part of Michael's career is that he's worked on both sides of the table. So he's worked from the 3PL side, but also as the customer side as well. So welcome, Michael. Uh, to my absolute here, um, Desi, Desi Bell, founder of, uh, of Zagora and CEO. Um, might be worth Googling that and looking up. It's quite an interesting website. Um, Zagora are an active apparel company, launched only in uh, July of 2011, so a, a young company. The company have celebrated uh, an explosive success in the first few years, uh, based on a very sound product offering, a very proven proposition, and certainly harnessing uh, some of the latest online technology. Uh, they're now selling in 126 countries with a very uh, enviable social media following of over half a million, and they've sold over 700,000 products since the launch. So, uh, welcome to Desi. And finally, and not last, Simon. Um, Simon Finch, Deputy Director of Distribution at Harrods. Simon joined Harrods as a graduate trainee in 1995 and has been living the brand ever since. Um, Simon's responsible for pre-retailing and distribution, also warehousing, fulfilment and delivery. So, as you can see, we've got quite, a, quite an experienced panel here to tackle this question. So for the next sort of 40 minutes, the key thing that we're going to be asking ourselves is how future innovations in home delivery will improve the customer experience and raise retailers above the pricing war. We will be having a Q&A session around about 10 minutes. However, if you have got a really burning question, and it might help us out at a sticky quiet time, then please do raise your hand. Uh, we have got people with microphones about. So if, if you do want to ask a question, then, then please feel free to do so. So we'll start off really, starting off really with Jason, if you'd like to, uh, to start us off. Thank you. Is that working? Brilliant. Um, I think the first point I'd make is that the rules <coughs> of the game actually don't change, which is a strange thing to say when we're talking about innovation. Um, but this is all about customers. Um, and what customers want is they want to be listened to. They want you to understand what it is they need to feel loved and for you not to let them down. And that doesn't change, even when there's innovation. So that's, that's kind of the starting point. But then actually, if you look at innovation, the speed of innovation is getting faster all the time. I mean, it's only five years ago or so that the iPad came out. Um, imagine trying to have a conversation about uh, innovations now that doesn't involve something like that. And the next innovations will, will be happening in two years, one year, six months. So we need to be able to move faster, and customers' expectations will change of what it is they want, but the basics of how we delight them will not change. So what I want to do is just very quickly make a couple of predictions just to give you a sense of the moving target we're aiming at. So let's fast forward 10 years. Imagine we're getting together in 10 years. I've got a couple of predictions for you, um, and it's really around... Uh, the last mile, where I, where I think the, the, we're going to see some changes. So the first is that I don't think customers are going to have to be home when you deliver to them. So we, you can already buy an internet-controlled door lock from guys like Lockitron. You can buy an internet-enabled doorbell with a camera in it that you can answer with your app. You can get webcams now in your house, and future burglar alarms will probably use webcams rather than those funny sensors, so if your house is broken into, you'll be able to see who it was. Bring all that together, why wouldn't you let someone deliver your, your TV or your groceries actually into your house when you're not there? It may sound far-fetched right now. I'm willing to bet that will be here in 10 years' time. 
Um, the second one is, is dynamic delivery. So right now we try and deliver to a customer's house or their place of work. But imagine actually if we remove the inconvenience for the customer of not having to be of not having to be at their address. So this week, for example, I'm in a different city every night. What I'd love is to be able to place my order and for the, the, the company who's making the delivery to actually figure out from my itinerary and from being able to track me from the app in my pocket, where am I going to be and actually get that product to meet me. And I'm not talking the, sort of the last minute that they'll chase me down the street. There'd have to be some form of collaboration with the customer. But actually getting to a place where you've removed the inconvenience for the customer of having to be at home. So those are a couple of predictions. Am I right? Who knows? And will they, will they manifest themselves exactly as I've described? Probably not. Over the time frame I've described, probably not. What you can be sure of is there will be change. Um, and therefore, actually, the biggest innovations for me are not actually about um, what we're going to see for the customer. It's going to be what goes on behind the scenes and how we enable organizations to be ready for that culturally and organizationally so that you can move really quickly to be able to adapt as your customers' expect expectations are changing. Okay, some good points there. I think it's also interesting to note as well on, on the whole technology piece that if you look nowadays at the speed of acceptance of technology, I mean, I have a couple of, uh, well, my parents, fortunately, are still alive. They're in their 80s, and my father for Christmas got an iPad. And then I visit one of my friends who's got a sort of two-year-old child who almost instinctively, or less than two, knows to swipe on an iPad. So I think the, the, the key thing, the acceptance rate also is extremely quick. So, Michael, just, just, just sort of passing on to you if you want to see if you can uh, grab on that. What, what's your take on this? What's your thoughts? Um, from, from my perspective, uh, delivery service is definitely going to continue to be a differentiator, um, not just in terms of the quality of the service, but also in terms of what you're offering. Um, I think, I don't know if it's slightly contrary or not, that price will always play a part. And I think it depends who you are, what your customer is, who your customer is, what your products are. I'm sure a Harrods customer, a price point may have a slightly different meaning than a little customer. So, you know, it's about understanding who your customer is and, and what's important to them. And I also think, and this is a sort of theme we see a lot, that customers aren't you can't put them in a box. So you may be a socioeconomic group X, but that doesn't mean you'll always shop in the same way. Sometimes you'll be shopping well in advance of, of a requirement, whether it be a planned wedding gift and you'll put more consideration, you'll shop around. Other times you'll be um, someone who's forgotten your wife's anniversary and you'll be requiring to shop with a next day delivery tomorrow and the price is almost irrelevant. So we all have what I call different shopping missions and all of our customers move between those shopping missions at different times. So a real trick for us, I think, is to be able to offer a, a delivery portfolio that provides a mix between service when customers want service, convenience when customers want convenience, and cost when customers want cost. And you only have to look at the data that whilst there are all these delivery innovations out there and they'll continue to drive the market very hard in the next two, three, five years, whatever, um, you look at the recent IMRG data on delivery and it still says that the number one and the primary delivery service chosen by customers, which is actually still growing year on year, is the economy one. So people are still very much around price as well. So I think it's about having that spread of offer. Okay. So I think, I think the key thing there, price has a place and price always will have a place, but obviously that depends on your market. But let's just, let's just put this question over to, to, to Desi. Obviously from, from your point, you know, you, you've um, developed a business, if you like, within the modern era. So, so what, what's your take on this and how have you, uh, you know, what are some of your secrets in terms of what you've managed to achieve so far with uh, Zagora? Um, so uh, thank you so much for, for having me here. I think our perspective is slightly different because we have built our entire business in social media. And so we use Facebook and Twitter uh, primarily as channels that, uh, you know, customer service channels, uh, information gathering channels. Uh, a place where our customers can come and meet and talk about our products or their experience. Um, and I guess building on, on Jason's point, I would agree that you know, in the future we need to continue removing the obstacles for customers in terms of convenience. And I think social media could actually provide a very valuable avenue where you can gather and collect information because we all, uh, well, a large chunk of, especially you know, younger people, do put a large chunk of their life on social media you know, very actively, you know, whether you are out with your friends, you know, where you're going to be tomorrow, uh, you know, through, through pictures, through messages, there's a huge amount of information mm. can be gathered. And I guess the challenge is how can you 
get the permission of consumers to gather that information to make their experience easy and better. Um, you know, through finding them wherever they are, you know, delivering to them whatever is most convenient. But I guess also using it a lot more actively as a customer service tool, so post, you know, um, post delivery. Um, I've had, have had experience with a number of large retailers in the UK where you'd send a tweet saying, you know, I have a de you know, delay in my parcel or whatever and you never get a response. And I think there definitely needs to be a shift um, amongst large players in the market to using social media because it's such a live and, you know, very transparent tool um, to serve customers better. Mm. Just, just a quick straw poll question to the audience. How, how many people in the audience, uh, confession time, are an active social mediaist within the thing? How many just as a, as a bit of a... Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Um, you did mention about, obviously, Facebook and Twitter as being the big one, and obviously Facebook, um, you know, we've seen something that uh, certainly has, has grown from being a nothing to being its own nation. Yep. Um, it's bigger than some countries. What, what have been the real key things how you've engaged Facebook? How have you really engaged the whole Facebook piece? You talked about, obviously, using it for collecting information as a customer service tool, but how have you actually engaged your business within the social media itself? Well, I think with social media, it's a double-edged sword. So on the one hand, it's a fantastic tool to collect information, but on the other hand, it obviously can expose weaknesses um, if you're not serving your customers right. Mm. And we have had experiences in the past where our service might have been suboptimal for mm. whatever reason during busy periods, mm. and you do get that on social media. Mm. Um, but I think the key there is if a customer does come to you with a complaint, mm you know, you can very easily turn them into one of your biggest advocates because they've actually taken the time to complain. Mm. Um, and our experience has been such that, you know, when we do pay attention to customers that are particularly, you know, unhappy, yeah. uh, we do turn them into some of our biggest advocates. But, you know, Facebook is very much about giving people what they want. Um, so social media channels tend to be the, you know, cheapest form of entertainment. So <laughs> they're a great, you know, great place to provide people with offers, uh, you know, news, Anything which is engaging competitions, uh, you know, so for us has been very much about providing our customers with the right kind of content, listening to them what they want, um, uh, and really using that to kind of propel our business forward. Okay, that's great. Simon, could I just turn to you, and uh, what, what, what are the Harrods customers' views on social media? Uh, good morning. Before I talk to, about, about the Harrods views, I guess, it's just to pick up on one of Desi's points as well. The... Um, Social media is absolutely key for us now. Our, our online business is, is only a small percentage of, of our overall business. It's less than 5% of our business is, is, is Harris.com, our online business. Yet its importance is, is, is massive. And, and the reason for that partly is, is, is social media. When, when you do something wrong, when you have performance that is, that is suboptimal, obviously something we, we try to avoid at all costs, you know about it straight away and everybody knows about it straight away. And I think you know, listening to, to sort of some of Jason's thoughts about how innovation will, will, will change in the future. I, I think we'll see innovation in social media as well and how we interact today will be, will be very different in the future, but it will remain that massively important channel. Um, at Harrods, um, unsurprisingly, price isn't our biggest factor. Um, it is important, um, you know, without wanting to cast aspersions at, uh, at, at uh, Sainsbury's or Devonham's, it, it, it's not a factor. We don't get into, into price bidding wars. It, it, it's, it's not something we do. Um, what is really key for us, what is really important for us is experience, is, is customer experience. Um, and I think innovation has, and as, as we've already heard, plays a massive part in that. Um, when that experience is wrong, when we don't deliver what our customers expect, um, then, then it is a real problem for us. Um, and our customers can have um, incredibly high expectations. Um, just, just to share a, a, recent, a recent story with you, we, um, we had a, a wealthy customer, um, a yacht in Monaco. Um, it was going to, you know, obviously yeah, watch the Grand Prix sitting on his yacht. Um, got a new girlfriend. Um, she didn't like the colour of the sofas on the yacht. And this is three days before the Grand Prix. So that customer's expectations was that he could call us, um, we would um, have a sofa in stock, um, that we could get it from Knightsbridge to Monaco, and that we could match his girlfriend's colour. And, and the colour she wanted was a sort of aqua blue colour. So did we have a sofa in stock in that colour? No. We did have a sofa though, and we did have a relationship with a, with a furnishing fabrics firm that, that can provide the colour. So to meet that customer's expectations, we sent that on a transit van to Monaco. 
And we had two upholsterers in the back. I probably shouldn't be saying this, actually. But we had two upholsterers in the back of the van changing the fabric on that sofa. Now, you know, would Debenhams do that? No. You know, would Harrods do that? It, 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 it's, not, it's not economic, really, to, to do that. But, but that, I suppose the reason I make that point is just to, uh, just to underline the, the, the extent of our customer expectations. Um, and so innovations can help us do that, can help us meet those expectations, but it is only, it is only a, a, um, a small part of that. Um, when it goes wrong, though, when we can't, when we can't meet those, those expectations, um, that's where, where we have to be proactive. And, and again, looking at innovations, looking at whether it's as simple as interactive texting to say it's coming, or, or whether it's looking at our routes and seeing that we've got a risk of mi missing that delivery, um, in Monaco, we had half an hour to spare before they closed the roads the day before for part of the practice. So really, really tight stuff. But we tracked that vehicle. We have a vehicle tracking system. We, and it told us that we were going to make that delivery. So when that customer contacts us, we can do that. So I think from a, from a Harrods perspective, it's all about the experience. It's all about meeting those customers' expectations. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the innovations in delivery and what we get now are, are aspects of enabling us to do that but they're not points of difference in themselves. It, it, it's just part of that experience. And when you're, you know, sometimes you're, you're using third-party carriers, obviously, to make deliveries, you need to ensure that that experience carries through. Um, and as those carriers begin to or continue to embrace those innovations, it, it, it aligns us much more in ensuring we can deliver, deliver what those customers want. Okay. Jason, can, can I just ask you, from, from a Sainsbury's uh, perspective, in terms of the, the current... Um, technologies and the Facebooks and Twitters. What, what are your current uh, real big usage areas? Are they the same as everybody else's? And, and what are the ones of the future that sort of Sainsbury's are looking towards? In terms of social media? Or? In terms of social media. Um, so, so in terms of social media, we, we actively monitor um, uh, all the feeds that our, our customers are using. Um, and to Desi's point, we try and make sure that we never get into a situation where a customer says something um, about Sainsbury's or has a concern which we don't address. Um, and I think one of the really important things in here is the customers choose the channel that they're going to communicate with you in, mm. not you. Um, and so you absolutely have to be in a place where you know what your customers are saying about you um, and that you respond to that. So, um, so at the moment, we, we, we very much use that as a, um, uh, a proactive way of, of responding to customers' concerns. Um, there are a whole raft of things that you can then go and do in the future, um, and I'm not talking about Sainsbury's here, but um, the types of innovations one might get into. So, you know, for example, uh, I, I read the other day about a, a bakery in Shoreditch who tweets when the croissants come out of the oven. Well, we have bakeries in every single one of our stores. Um, actually, if your local store, um, you were able to follow when the croissants are coming out, actually that's great for customers. Um, I know that's not necessarily topical for delivery to home, but but in terms of uh, the ways you can use social media, there's a whole raft of things you can do. And you, you really just need to talk to your customers, understand what it is that they want, and innovate there, rather mm. than just come up with <coughs> lots of ideas. Mm. Um, in terms of exactly what we're doing in Sainsbury's, it would obviously be inappropriate for Absolutely, me to like yeah. <laughs> it's always worth a try, though, isn't it? Um, I think the interesting thing in, in, that's sort of coming out from this, particularly, is the customer decision, as it used to be, in terms of price and product and place and all the various P's that the marketing people have talked about, we, we, we seem to be adding this new T in now, this technology piece now. They will select the type of technology they wish to use. And I'd just sort of uh, throw this one over to Michael. Michael, fr from your point of view, the, the technologies, what are the, um, what are the areas that you guys are focusing on and what are the sort of thoughts for the future? Well, I mean, if, from a Debenhams perspective, I think we, um, we have some ground to catch up, so we probably aren't as far ahead in some respects as some of the uh, other organisations represented here in looking at cutting edge uh, and everything else, because we've got a lot of ground that we want to make up, which, you know, um, it's, it's a poor position to start with, but it's a great opportunity, because mm. we've got all the low-hanging fruit that everyone mm. else has already taken in terms mm. of increasing our spread of services and fulfilment channels and everything else, which we'll be playing into this year. Um, in terms of technology, yeah, we are a really, really strong player in the mobile app world. So um, that, that's clearly, I mean, actually, uh, I don't think these stats are too sensitive. Over half of our business, uh, half of our um, online customers now access us via mobile application, whether that be tablet or, or um, um, 
uh, mobile phone, smartphone. So certainly we're investing in those areas, uh, making sure that our apps and our phone and our tablet and iPad and Android services all look and feel exactly the same as they do on the website. Mm. Um, the social media piece, um, very strong in that, we're very active in Facebook and, and Twitter, trying to stimulate. So rather than just use it as a customer service channel, which we do, we also try and stimulate a market mm. trend, a flavour. You know, mm. We're trying to play that actually we're not just a fashion seller, we're a fashion um, you know, trendsetter, mm. um, not necessarily something Devon is always associated with, but you know, through that channel we are stimulating healthy debate and that debate definitely then triggers customer response yeah. and triggers uh, yeah. an interaction which often results in, the, in a sale. Yeah. So I think we're just playing in the heartland of the technology that's well, well established and is out yeah. in the mainstream mm. um, before we probably set our attention on then breaking some, some new ground and cutting okay. some... some yeah. Desi, can I ask you, in terms of, you, you talked about the importance of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, about monitoring the customer, you talked about the opportunities of, of turning a problem into a, a bit of a sort of show for the organisation, etc. What is the, what sort of monitoring tech, uh, activity and, and how do you actually keep abreast of all this? Because it's, it's quite a, a feisty thing to follow. What sort of things can you, you know, you tell us that you actually do to keep in touch with all of that? We use monitoring uh, technology to you know, monitor our social media channels. So we use Zendesk, we use Hootsuite, uh, we use HubSpot, um, just three tools. And, and we try to be very responsive in terms of, um, you know, what our customers are saying. But I think back to some of the points that have been raised, we try and stimulate the discussion. So I think social media is a very interactive channel. Um, and I think, you know, some retailers try and push messages through social media, much like it's kind of just any other channel without mm. expecting much of a debate. Mm. Whereas in social media, you have to engage the consumer. So whether that's, you know, providing competition, whether it's asking people to give you their feedback, um, asking them what, you know, color they want to see, you know, what service they, they prefer to get. So it's all about stimulating the discussion and I guess setting a topic on a regular basis so that you can kind of steer the consumer view towards what, what would be most useful towards serving the customers in the best way. Okay, brilliant. And finally, Simon, if I just um, turn to you, in terms of the, the new key technologies, what sort of uh, new key technologies do you think we're going to be facing? Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. I get Just turning back to, to Michael's point, I think Harrods, where, where we are at the moment, we're, 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 we're playing catch up to a certain extent as well. We, we're, not, you know, we're, not, we're not leading the way in terms of where we are on our, on our sort of, from our online perspective, from, from, from how we do it. So we're, we're learning as well at the moment. Um, for me, it's the, it's the simple stuff that makes things easier, and, and, and it's it's giving customers the choice. So working with our, our, you know, our, our partners that we use in terms of home delivery, and just simple stuff, you know, in, interactive texting. You, you know, it's the simplest simplest thing in the world, um, but we, we we don't see that yet across the industry. You know, would you like it? You know, your your, your delivery is coming today. Is that okay? Yes. Would you like it tomorrow? Would you like it the following day? You know, would you like it? Uh, you know, to your post office, for example. Um, so, so the simple stuff. I don't think, and I think the theme from what everyone said, it's not the technology itself that, is, that, that impresses the customer or wows the customer. It's how you use that technology to deliver the experience that meets the expectation. And that expectation will be different. Uh, you know, a Sainsbury's customer's expectation will be different to a Zagora or to a Debenhams. Or